Okay, so hello everybody. First of all, no class Monday. I believe it's Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Second, uh, I hope homework four will be on the web later today. Uh, it, I, at the moment, I have only one question in mind, so it might stay just one question. Oh, and you know what? Maybe before that, uh, people ask for a hint uh, for how to do, I think it's homework three. Uh, so, uh, where uh, basically compute the invariant associated with uh, the W algebra of dn, or maybe, sorry, it's called, I think, d2n, the dihedral group with 2n elements, meaning rotations of an n goal. So first of all, what is dn? So dn is the group generated well, there are many ways to write it, but I'll write it in the following way. So it's uh, uh, generated by k, which will be reflection. So this will be reflection. And uh, the reason why I call it k is very weird. So don't ask. And uh, by uh, elements r sub j, uh, which are rotations by j clicks, uh, so uh, j runs between 0 and uh, n minus 1. Okay? Modulus some relations, so k squared is equal to the identity, and uh, uh, reflecting and then rotating is the same as uh, uh, rotating by negative j and then uh, reflecting. So maybe I should have not written it as uh, j is here, but just j is in the cyclic group of n elements. So uh, z mod uh, n. Okay? And then uh, what is conjugate? Okay, so to compute this invariant, you compute conjugacy class by conjugacy class. And the only interesting conjugacy class is the conjugacy class of Rj. So, uh, and, and what's the, sorry, of K. And the conjugacy class of K is, so one of the conjugacy class, the interesting one, is uh, Krj. It's the collection of all things of the form Krj. So, uh, now suppose you have a crossing. And, uh, and, and you're computing the invariant. So the invariant for, for this crossing would be um, uh, the set of all maps such that uh, uh, such that of, 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 of all maps from the fundamental group to uh, uh, to, to this group, which map meridians to conjugacy classes, to, sorry, to this conjugacy class, and which satisfies some relation at the, at the crossing. So uh, there are one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four meridians of interest here. And these two are the same, so let's call both of them B. And let's call this one A and this one C. And the condition that needs to satisfy, to be satisfied, is that uh, A is the conjugate, or C is the conjugate of A by B, or maybe the other way around. So basically, I need to know how to conjugate elements of this conjugacy class by elements of itself. So I need to know what is K R, oops, K R J uh, conjugated by, you know what, let's call it K R I conjugated by K R J. Okay? Uh, so let's figure it out. How do you conjugate, you invert? Right, so what's the in for you, you inverse this inverse. So what's um, 
KRJ inverse, it's RJ, it's RJ inverse K inverse, but K inverse is a K K. And K anti commutes with the RJs. So sorry, so RJ inverse is R minus J. And K anti commutes, so this is K R uh, J. Not anti commutes with okay. So yeah, so that's the inverse. I hope I got it right. Uh, so so therefore uh, this should be K R J K R R I K K R J. Uh, so uh, let's move all the k's to the beginning. So this is k, and this r j becomes r minus j. This r i, one k goes over it. No, no. Sorry. So this r j remains rj because two k's have to pass over it. So this is rj. Uh, this is, sorry, the k remains here. This one k passes over it, so it's r negative i. And this is rj. So this is k r 2j minus i. Uh, I hope that I didn't get anything right. The point is that this is linear in, in this. So, uh, uh, so basically, uh, the equations, the equations that C has to satisfy, so this is really C on some assumptions on, on A and B. So the equation that C has to satisfy is linear. And that's the point. And I'm sorry, I, 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 yeah. I'm kind of confused about the actually is. Like, so sorry? I'm, I'm kind of confused about what the invariant actually is. Like on a, on a tangle, it's like the sum of the whole elements and whatever. Yeah. Yes. And then, but then for a knot, we, uh, yeah. So the invariant for any tangle is counting the representations into your group. Uh, which have specified meridians and specified longitudes. But, but, but for like a, for a knot, yeah. where it's closed, we, we don't get... Oh, uh, so for a knot, so, uh, sorry, maybe I should have said this. Uh, in fact, I was going to say today, but maybe I should have said it a long time ago. So, uh, all of this theory is about open things, okay? You, you cannot have closed components, at least yet. And, uh, the, but, but for knots, it doesn't matter, because, uh, because, uh, because you can always open them at, a, 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 at an arbitrary point. So, I don't know, like the trefoil uh, can also be drawn as, uh, yes. Yeah, then there is just one meridian and one longitude at the end. So the invariant uh, is, uh, sorry, keep getting the directions wrong. So the invariant will be a, an element of a single copy of the algebra. And that element, well, I'm claiming, can be computed very, very quickly, very, very efficiently. By basically writing, so 
by writing a certain system of equations and finding how many solutions it has. Okay? Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, sorry. Uh, okay, so let me remind you where we were. Um, so, first of all, we were in the middle of showing that virtual tangles are a meta-involutive Hopf algebra. And that given a Hopf algebra, a meta-involutive, sorry, given an ordinary, a, a genuine H, which is an, an e hop plus R, you can get an amorphism of e hops, of meta e hops, into the meta e hop of, uh, uh, of powers of, uh, of H. And then I, 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 the only example I know is this WG example. And uh, uh, it turns out that it's very beneficial to, re beneficial to relax the condition S squared is equal to the identity. So our goal for today will be to relax this condition and then we will be led to rotational virtual tangles which are a meta Hopf algebra, dropping the letter I, not involutive. And then given such a, a Hopf algebra, we will have uh, invariants, same, same style invariants, uh, but, uh, well, but then we will have more examples. Okay. Uh, but before that, a few comments. So, um, okay, so first of all, what are virtual tangles? So I defined, so I, I, I defined them to be uh, the metamonoid generated by overcrossing and undercrossing, so two elements, uh, modulo uh, the relation written here, and again, strictly speaking, these elements should be labeled, so this should be labeled i and j, i and j, and uh, this is called r, and it belongs to uh, t, the metamonoid of tangles, so let's call it t for today. Uh, so it belongs to t sub, uh, strictly sitting, speaking, the set ij, and this belongs to, well, the same, but it's, set, it's called r bar, and it belongs to t ij, and then you can apply the metamonoid operations, get more and more complicated things, and then mod out by these relations, which can be written in this language, so it makes sense. Uh, so I want to make so a few comments. First of all, strictly speaking, these are uh, virtual uh, pure or pure virtual tangles. So tangles that are not allowed, so not allowed to have uh, closed components. So um, uh, not can be drawn as open tangles, so it's fine. But actually, for, for, for a knot, you can show that the knot is in the, the you, you can choose a point and open it for an ordinary classical knot. The end result is independent of where you open it. Uh, for links, this is not true. So in fact, we still don't know how to manage links. And the second point I wanted to make is that, uh, strictly speaking, it's still just a metamonoid. I, j I still have to tell you how to, uh, uh, how to extend it to a, a, a involutive Hopf algebra. So I need to tell you what are the operations uh, uh, um, delta and uh, well, e S delta and epsilon. So um, uh, the answer is it's the obvious. So actually, or, or said differently, I only need to tell you how uh, how these operations act on the generators because. Uh, the identities of an e tells you uh, 
that if you know, say, how delta acts on, a, on, on, a, on two things, then you know how it acts on their product. That was one of the axioms of an EHOP. In fact, so uh, maybe you remember, that was the axiom that said that if you had two edges, then, or the axiom which was inspired by the picture, if you had two edges, then doubling them and then connecting is the same as connecting and then doubling. Uh, so, uh, so I only need to tell you how the operations act, act on the generators. And, uh, well, I hereby tell you that delta uh, 1, 2, 3 of uh, sorry, 1, 1, 2 of 1, uh, 3 is, so if you want to double strand number 1 in uh, a tangle that looks in this, for this generator, the result is this, which in itself can be rewritten as a product. So it's an element of the of of of, of the tangles. So I, I don't need to say more. I just wanted to say that you, you can, you should extend, you can extend the definition. Okay. And then the other comment I wanted to say is that uh, so well I'll say it kind of a bit informally. So virtual tangles, even though they talk about unclosed components, they know about closed components. So V tangles sort of know uh, about uh, closed uh, components. So what do I mean by that? Uh, so, uh, um, so I, I, I know how to speak about uh, non-closed components. So I know how to speak about tangles that have uh, things like that. Suppose I wanted to be able to speak about tangles that also have a closed component. How would I speak about it? I would say, well, actually, you know what? Let's let's uh, make it. Uh, sorry, just one sec. Uh, actually, color that have several. So, uh, so suppose I wanted to be able to speak about closed components. So I would say. A closed component is an open component modulo the relations that it doesn't matter where I open it. So modulo the relations that basically if I have two cuts, then uh, closing this cut, this cut, and regarding this as an, as an open tangle, as an open component with the opening here, is equivalent to closing this cut and regarding it as an open tangle with the opening here. So, uh, in other words, I could define I could define uh, so t of x comma y. So, if t sub x was the set of tangles with open component labeled by the set X, I will define uh, T sub X, Y to be tangle. So I would like to define T sub X, Y to be tangles with a set X of open uh, components and a set Y of closed components. So I would like to define this, right? Except, uh, uh, well, I just told you how to close one component, so I'll do it inductively. 
So I'll define uh, t sub x uh, or uh, comma y, where y is itself uh, a smaller set y union k, uni union an extra one, to be. Uh, so this will be the set of all uh, tangles with open components, uh, where one of the open components is now called k. Uh, and then I keep the, the, the y closed component. Uh, modulo the relation. Uh, that uh, there are two, so the two ways of closing a, 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 a picture like this are equivalent. So let's call these two strands I and J. And then the relations that I, I, I want to model out by are that for every uh, uh, tango, uh, what should I call it? K? No. Gamma. I don't know. For every tangle gamma inside the collection of tangles that have open components labeled with uh, X, I, and J, and closed components labeled by I, uh, the two ways of closing gamma are equivalent. So M, I, J, K of gamma is equal to, so you see, if these are, if this, these are I and J, then one way of closing is to multiply I with J, and the other is to multiply J with I. So M I J K of gamma is equal to M J I K of gamma. Uh, okay, why did I bother to tell you all of this? So. Well, question. Yeah. So, does it mean that we don't take orientation into account? Uh, so, as I see the picture, we have an orientation from I to J. Yeah. No. Every everything is always oriented. No. But so, sorry. What What do you mean by orientation from I to J? Oh. Multiplying I and J makes sense in both orders. Okay, uh, so um, uh, what's the point? The point is, suppose I wanted to construct an invariant of links. All I would have to do is to construct an invariant of tangles and check that it satisfies yet another relation. So links are not in my space, but they are in my language. I, I know how to compute, uh, I, 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 I potentially know how to compute invariants of links. Okay. Okay. So, uh, sorry, today's class is very philosophical. Like some classes are like super computational, some are philosophical. Today is on the philosophical end. And, uh, and the next one will probably be computational once again. So, um, uh, you know, I, I have to admit being a biased individual. So how did I choose, what did I, so, so what are virtual tangles? So I mean, I gave one formal definition here uh, but but even before I gave you another definition and they are the same, right? And and, and the other definition I gave was um, so virtual tangles are um, those I mean those those annotated graphs that represents that represent oriented, sorry, that represent ordinary tangles minus the condition uh, that these graphs would be planar. 
okay? But, but it was a bit up to my judgment to decide which features of a planar diagram should I include when considering like them as abstract graphs. So the features I've chosen were uh, that uh, at every vertex, uh, uh, one of the strands is, is, is upper and the other is lower. And they are cyclically, or you can cyclically order, order the, the edges emanating from every uh, vertex uh, counterclockwise. OK? Uh, but, but, but the plane has other local properties. For example, uh, every knot has a so-called uh, checkerboard coloring. So a checkerboard coloring is the coloring in which you color, well, the, the faces are uh, black and white in such a way that uh, uh, no neighboring faces have the same color. So basically, if you color the outside white, then this is forced to be colored black. And then this is follow, forced to be colored white. This is again black. This is white. This is again black. This is uh, white. This is black. Black, white, black, white, dark. No, sorry, this is white, and this is black. So every node diagram has a checkerboard coloring. I could declare that this is my new uh, uh, local structure, that a part of the local structure is this coloring. OK? And then instead of just having two generators, uh, uh, like uh, the overcrossing and the uh, undercrossing, I would have four generators. Namely, I would have the uh, overcrossing uh, 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 with, with, with in which the white faces are on the sides and the black faces are uh, vertical, and the overcrossing in, in which it is the opposite. Okay? And then, uh, so I will define, uh, I don't know, I could define, uh, what should I call it, checkerboard uh, V tangles, so CV tangles. to be uh, the uh, metamonoid, or the revised metamonoid, I don't know, let's call it metamonoid tangle, uh, sorry, tilde, uh, uh, generated by those four generators, so four generators, modulo the obvious relations that you can write, so basically put Write Rhydomeister 1 and Rhydomeister 2 and Rhydomeister 3. So write the three relations and checkerboard, and, and checkerboard color them in all possible ways. And each of them, these become a relation. So modulo uh, revised Rhydomeister uh, 1, 2, 3. What do I mean by revised metamonoid? So I mean that uh, the components, instead of just being components, instead of just being a set, uh, each component should have an indication of what are the colors on its ends. So 
uh, so, so, in, so, so each component should have an indication whether black is on the right or on the left uh, at the beginning and also at the end. And you can only compose components, you can only stitch if the colors match. So I, I don't want to, I, I could make it formal, I don't want to make it formal because it's going nowhere, I just want to say that it exists. Okay? Uh, uh, suppose now I wanted to construct uh, 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 algebraic invariants of the same style. So uh, I want to define what is a, what should we call it? Uh, a checkerboard Hopf algebra. So, uh, chop, algebra, uh, chop algebras. Okay, so what kind of algebraic gadget will allow me to construct invariants of such things? And by the way, such things include all of classical knot theory. So in principle, I could get strong invariants of knots out of this. Uh, so what would be a chop algebra? So uh, maybe I'll start with what is an algebra. So a different way of saying what is an algebra is to say that it is a linear category with uh, one uh, object. So, what's a linear category? I think I'm not messing up the names. So, a linear category is a category in which you can add morphisms. So, the morphisms themselves, instead of just being a set, they're a vector space. For example, vector spaces are a linear category because the morphisms are linear transformations and you can add linear transformations. And you also want the composition operation to be bilinear, okay? Uh, so that's a linear category. If you have a linear category with, uh, 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 with one object, it means that you just have one object and all the morphisms go from that object to itself. Of course, there is a special one called the identity, but there are also many others. You can add them. You can, you can compose any two of them, because in a the category you can compose only, um, you know, only if the target agrees with the, with the domain of the next. But since there is only one object, you can compose any two of them. So you can compose any two of them. The, the composition is associative because that's one of the axioms of a category. Uh, it's bilinear, it's distributive because this is one of the axioms of uh, of a linear category, so you got an algebra. So an algebra is basically a linear category with one object. So a chop algebra will be a linear uh, category with two objects. So if you have, uh, so, so first of all, what does a thing like that look like? It looks like well, here are the two objects, and there are uh, uh, morphisms that go from this one to itself, morphisms that go from this one to that one, morphisms that go like that, and morphisms that go like that. When you compose something of this type with something of that type, you get something that goes it's obvious, okay? Uh, why is this relevant? Because um, I want, so, so each strand will have a, a coloring at the beginning. So it will be either black-white or white-black. And a coloring at the end, the coloring may change depending on, uh, right, depending on how many things it might cross on the way. 
So it will have a coloring on the end, uh, which again will be either black white, uh, sorry, either black white or white black. And then uh, I, I will have an, an, an element in some algebraic space, which either runs from BW or WB into either BW or WB. So these two objects will be uh, uh, BW and WB. Uh, and uh, basically a strand like uh, a, a strand that starts with, let's say I read from left to right, so BW uh, and then at the end I should be reading left to right, well, I don't know. Uh, so a strand that runs from BW to WB should have an element which is a morphism from BW to to, to WB. Actually, probably the correct convention would be to, uh, to reverse. Oh, I'm, I'm not confused about whether or not to reverse this. So, yeah, no, sorry. I want this to be labeled according to the following one. So if this is, yes, yeah, so this is WB. Okay, sorry. Um, and then, okay. Uh, uh, and then it should have, okay, and then the, the four generators will be in some tensor powers of this funny notion of algebra. You first have to define what this is. Uh, and the axioms, you will be able to write them in this language. Uh, I would have to define uh, the deletion, strand deletion operations and strand doubling operations. And in fact, uh, and in fact that's a bit tricky because if you delete a strand, it's no long, it, it might ruin the, the it changes the check the color the checkerboard coloring of everything else. Likewise, if you double a strand, it changes the, the checkerboard coloring of every, everything else. So, uh, so, so you can double a strand, you can only triple a strand. Alternatively, you allow yourself two types of strands. So one type is a type in which the color changes, and another type is a type in which the color does not change. And then you can uh, double a strand only if you, uh, only if, one of the copy, one of the copies is the, the type that color changes and the other is the type that doesn't color change. Why am I telling you all of this? You could come up with this. Uh, I don't know any examples. I don't know any reason to think that there are no examples. I don't know if anybody ever looked at it. Uh, there are invariants that depend on the checkerboard coloring. There are invariants that have formulas that involve the checkerboard col coloring. I don't know if anybody ever lifted them correctly or lifted them appropriately to tangles. I don't know if the lifting would end up having this shape. Uh, it's a completely, okay. Now, uh, one more thing. You know, there is the checkerboard coloring, but there is also the Alexander coloring. So the Alexander coloring is a lifting of that to the integers. Namely, uh, so you see, if you have a, a, a planar, uh, uh, a planar note, you can, uh, uh, label the faces with how far you are from infinity. So how many things do you have to cross uh, to go to infinity? So this will be labeled 1, but you have to uh, label them with multiplicity. 
So how many things you have to cross such that they cross you going from right to left? So this is one. Uh, this is actually again zero because to go to infinity or, 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 or said differently, I, I label each component by the rotation, by, by the winding number of the knot around it. So how many, okay? And then again, this, this, this can be, you can ask yourself, you can define virtual knots based on this. Okay, so a virtual knot based on that, uh, well, in addition to, to, to the information, to, to, this, to the information we so far considered, we'll have on each uh, edge a number, and in fact a pair of number, i and i plus one, and j and j plus one, okay? Uh, so, uh, and again, you could study this. I don't think anybody seriously looked into algebra with these things. Okay, why did I tell you all of this? Because I want to tell you about rotational virtual tangles. And rotational virtual tangles are just uh, an algebraization of one particular property of the one particular extra property of the plane and for reasons I know unknown to me this one is successful okay I mean I, I don't know if this is because these are failures or because nobody tried them but I do know that the one I'm going to tell you about is successful. And if you think it's arbitrary, good, you have work to do. Prove that it's arbitrary by showing that these are also successful. Okay, so the extra thing about the plane that you need to know is that a closed curve, curves, sorry, closed, okay, so uh, closed, Immersions of uh, S1 into S2, not S2, sorry, the plane, into R2 uh, uh, have a rotation uh, number. So, uh, uh, what's the rotation number? So the rotation number is uh, uh, you you uh, consider the tangent to S1 at every point, right? And the tangent is uh, is never zero because I'm considering immersions. And this tangent, this tangent map, or, or this tangent is therefore itself, if you normalize it, becomes an element of S1. So given an immersion, gamma, you have the tangent uh, to gamma, and you can think of it as a map from S1 to S1. Uh, and it's, by the way, called the Gauss map of gamma, and this map has a degree. So the degree of T gamma is defined to be, uh, so let's write it the other way, so the rotation number of gamma is defined to be the degree of this tangent map. So for example, uh, uh, what is the rotation number of the anode? Well, it depends which I know. So here, the tangent starts vertical, and then it turns to the left, or turns counterclockwise, and it, it makes a full rotation counterclockwise until you come back. Counterclockwise is positive, so this is one. 
what's the rotation number of uh, the opposite oriented anode? Well, it's negative one. Uh, what's the rotation number of uh, uh, the figure eight immersion? So, uh, well, you can check. I mean, you rotate one way and then you rotate the other way. Uh, so it's equal to zero. By the way, how do you compute degrees? So one standard way to compute degrees is to uh, uh, count the pre-image. So you pick a point here, and you count its pre-images here with signs. Okay? So the point you standardly pick is this one. Or, you know, you could pick any other one, but you know, I'll pick this one. So what does it mean? It means that I need to count uh, the number of times that the tangent is pointing to the right with signs. So here the tangent is pointing to the left, it doesn't count. Here the tangent is pointing to the left, it doesn't count. Here it points to the right. And here it again points to the right. But here it goes down through 1. So that's clockwise. That's a contribution of negative 1. That's a contribution of plus 1. And that's uh, uh, 0. Said differently, you look for all caps and caps. So one way of computing the rotation number is to look for all caps and caps. And all the caps and caps in which stuff is oriented to the left don't count. And caps and caps in which stuff is oriented to the right, so this one counts as negative 1, and this one counts as plus 1. OK? Note that this. Uh, 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 I, th this is certainly new information because there are two unknowns now. There are two different rotation numbers for the unknowns. So now I want to study uh, um, well, okay, I want to lift it to tangles. I want to think what would a tangle be? Okay? So uh, 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 first of all, in order to compose, the tangents have to match. So, you know, I can compose this line with this line because, uh, I mean, because there will be a jump in the tangent. I will not be able to compute the, the, the Gauss map will be discontinuous. Okay? So, the tangles must have an element of S1 of the circle at every end, namely the direction of the tangent. And you must compose them only if they, they match. There's actually a nicer way to do it. We just declare that uh, tangents at ends are always uh, oriented up. Okay, so, so we consider tangles that, so our tangles will always be uh, uh, of this shape form. So the tangents at the ends, no matter whether incoming or outgoing, will always be pointing up. And then composition always makes sense. Because, well, the next one will also be oriented up, so composition makes sense. Uh, and I run out of time. Ah, gee, this is a shame because I thought the philosophy will end today, uh, but it will end after the, the, the weekend. So, but anyway, the, the end result is at the end, we get to a metamonoid with two generators as before, except you have to think of them more like that. Uh, sorry, more like so basically, two generators just as before, except 
uh, I mean, you, uh, except with, with vertical ends, and a new generator, which is the generator in which the, the tangent actually spins. So it's the letter C. So two generators, R, R bar, and C. In fact, there is also a C bar. Uh, and then relations and properties, but all of that will come next. Will come next time. Oh, sorry, that was too philosophical for us today. I apologize. Let's finish this.